up what up what up this is mike the philosopher here with another one this one is the make a move reunion the final thoughts on how it all went down special guest with me is in the building yo yo how you doing hey i'm good how are you <laughs> i'm doing <laughs> i'm doing good i'm doing good this one was a crazy episode um, it, was. it was a crazy season to be honest it, it really was. It, it really yeah. was. Yeah. So uh, let's, without further ado, let's just hop right on into it. Okay. okay. Um, you know, first of all, let me say this. I noticed something about this uh, season. I noticed something about the men. And what I noticed about the men is that they all seem to be a bit uncomfortable with this show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You had Kirsten, who didn't want no parts of it. You had Cam, who is ambiguous at best. You had, <laughs> you had Mizell, who was a little bit all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, you have some brothers who are confused. The only one who didn't seem to walk away unscathed was Maurice, but we're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. but what, what are your thoughts about how I viewed it as far as the men seeming to be a bit taken back by this process? What what would you say about that? I, I agree. The men were kind of all over the place. Uh, they, they were confused, and uh, I'm not surprised because me myself <laughs> was confused and I've been confused along the way with this show. So I can imagine how maybe the show started off or maybe the men understood one thing and maybe it switched gears during, um, you know, the filming of the, of, of the season. But I would agree that I don't think the men had a really good experience with this show. <laughs> With the exception of Maurice, and I, I know Maurice kind of, we can kind of put Maurice on the side, but the other men, I don't think they, 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 they got a really good experience from this show. And I think, I, almost, I think that they did to some extent a disservice to the men. I'm not going to say that the men are without blame, but I, I think in large part, they did a disservice to the men on this show. Wow. Yeah. Um, I would agree with that. And I was, I would say that they probably, the men probably did think that it was going to be a regular ready to love season where they could talk to more than just one woman. And they got a little, seemed to be a, a quiet protest, if you will, that, you know, uh, even, even your boy Don, um, he mm -hmm. was, I think he was feeling the way because Ashley, we'll, we'll get into it, but mm -hmm. I just felt like, um, I seen the, the quiet protest by the men. I was wondering if anybody else seen that and, uh, got those vibes. Um, what do you think about having a female matchmaker and a female host on the show? Is that is that a issue at all or not really? I did not like the host. I did not wow. like I did not like her approach. I thought that in large part she contributed to <laughs> a lot of the confusion <laughs> and the drama. Um, I think having a different perspective um, could actually benefit the show. I, I think, yeah, I, I did not, I did not like the host, and 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 as we go along, we can get into some detail, you know, examples of where wow. she she added to the drama, she added to the confusion. Uh, overall, I don't think that they held the ladies accountable. I think that that was a big part of it. I think uh, the the host, both the host and Tamika, as well as the ladies overall, I think they. They fed into that whole narrative and they did not, they didn't hold the women accountable. Uh, at all, at all. They didn't hold them accountable. And it was, everything was, the men 
fault and they're not doing this and and the host was really in my opinion a bit combative towards the men and she was very favorable towards the women obviously showing the bias you know what i mean and it just is what it is it's 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 pretty clear by now that this is a woman's show so i think a lot of it, it's, it's it's like it's turning a lot of the men off not, like you got the love experiment you got make a move i will be amazed if they get the men for this format for next year well and or, it's or, or and it's season. and it's unfortunate because I think that a lot could be gleaned from the show. And I, I just, but you can't alienate one half, you know, of the piece of the puzzle and think that in the end, you're going to have a successful show. Because listen, I'm a, I'm a woman. And so I'm going to see things, I think, naturally from a woman's perspective. I think just because I, I'm a woman. But I think as you grow and as you mature, you try to just look at things objectively and kind of take the me out of it. Um, and in the end, as a woman, I think the bias comes in when we, you know, I want women to win. And mm -hmm. so part of that is, you know, knowing better, doing better and, and, and holding each other accountable. And I think that's what's missing with this group. Not not one lady on that panel stood up and went against the grain and spoke and spoke the truth. And it was just unfortunate. That was the thing that was just so upsetting to me. They all wanted to be the victim. And in the end, I don't think any of them walked away uh, benefiting overall from the show. And here's the thing. When I say benefit, that did not necessarily mean they had to walk away with a mate. But to grow somehow, to broaden their perspective somehow, to take something away from the show and go out into the real world and apply that, you know, in an effort to maybe, um, you know, welcome love and, and, and welcome love in a healthy, beneficial uh, way. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the things I noticed, too, is that Vernicia, she said to Sharice that, you know, she was bullied and you know she was see what what i what i start to see is i really start to see it still puzzles me <laughs> you explained it to me last week why a lot of women seem to have sharice back and i still i'm still puzzled by it because i seen vernicia giving her a lot of excuses i seen this that and the third and i seen a bit of a sisterhood i know it's a sisterhood among the ladies but it still puzzles me because if Sharice was a man, he would not be getting this type of understanding. He would not be getting this type of um, excuses for for his behaviors. If Sh if Sharice was a man and he was as brash and as you know dismissive and things like that as Sharice is. No Fs will be given. Well, and the thing about it is, I, I'm not going to give Sharice a pass. But what I am going to say is, is that, and 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 I and I will stand on that. In that, I I was rooting for Sharice this whole this whole season. And if if anybody made an effort to change, I think it was Sharice. Now, what I do believe is that Sharice needs to go a step further because. You know, she's a 44-year-old woman, and she can no longer hide behind the whole thing. I was bullied as a kid because it's triggering for her. It continues to trigger her. So whatever she experienced, um, you know, as a young adult or during what time frame she experienced it, it continues to reside right below the surface. And at any moment, it pops off. So I agree with you in terms of Renisha giving her a pass. I don't think Cherie should be given a pass for bad behavior and then say, oh, well, I act this way because of right. what I'm doing. She's a 44-year-old woman. Exactly. I mean, whatever traumas, 
or mm-hmm. she was bullied as a child, uh, she should have worked that out through therapy. Right. She even came on the show. I, mean, if I, 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 honest, I agree. I because, agree. Because because if it's a man, the, the, it, the he's not gonna get that sympathy. No. They're gonna say go get healed. They're gonna go. Right. They're gonna say you know you 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 a forty four year old man. You should be over that by now. Right. That's, that's what the man would. Right. Right. And that's the part that kind of got me a little suspicious of of, of all of this because it's just. I don't mind them being supportive with Sharice, but if you're going to do that, do that with the men too. And I don't see a whole lot of sympathy for the men. No. You know what I mean? I mean, even the host was obnoxious with the men. Yeah, and they they, they treated the men poorly. I'm I'm sitting here thinking, and I, I, I just don't think that anybody deserved that type of treatment it was all i mean it was just like guns ablaze that the guys in um and i'm and i'm going back over and i'm looking back over the show and i i mean of course kirsten was moving i guess you could say he was but he didn't really he wasn't into ashley so you could understand why he was kind of moving the way that he moved but mm-hmm. did he just blatant what were any of the men and then my did some shady stuff but even with my I I blame Renisha because she put all of that into play right mm-hmm. so I if I'm if I'm being honest were any of the guys just horrible guys I don't think so unless I'm missing so something I don't think that they were just mean trashy individuals I don't uh-huh. think so I don't either. You remember there, there was a show that was on 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 this channel. I think it was, and it was um um I forgot the name of it though. There were there there was a therapist or whatever, and it was a, it was it was like three couples. Put a like, ring. Put a ring on it. Put a ring on it. That's it. That's it. And during their reunion, it was a bit of the same, right? The host was. Uh, really kind of going in on the men and it was because uh, one guy he was he was a you know what considered could be considered a high value man you know six feet and he was like i don't want no woman who's uh you know uh got a kid or whatever and you know i i deserve the best and the, the host just went in on him i don't know if you've seen that series but i did um, but it's it's getting kind of tiresome to watch these host women try to shred these men in these reunions um i think and just in my opinion i think um tommy is a little more balanced when it comes to uh the reunions he's a he's he's a lot more balanced but the women seem to be very biased um in these reunions um that's just something i noticed Another thing I noticed is that uh, Don, Kirsten, Cam, and Tabari have been accused of not being good communicators at some point in this in this uh, series. Why do you think, uh, is it all of these guys that's not good communicators, or do you think these women are just, they sitting in this <laughs> mansion with nothing to do? Okay. And they need somebody <laughs> okay. to, to test okay. them to, you know what I mean? What, what do you think it is? Okay, let's start with let's start with Tabari. And he said it, and I think you know, he said communication goes both ways. I agree. Vernisha mm-hmm. was not into him. Facts. And so I don't think Vernisha gave him very much to work with. Mm-hmm. And so I think she made it really clear from the beginning because you could see it you could see it play out from week to week to week that she wasn't really into him and so he even said it that you know he needed something some reassurance to know that if he was going to pursue her that it was going to kind of be reciprocated so i think he just went along with you know i'll show up when i'm supposed to I'll show up to get paid. And then this was one thing that I did mention last week. Um, 
these women have way more time than these men. So the men have their regular jobs, right? And so these women are here just to film this show. So if they have all this downtime, then they can't expect the man to even be available and have the same level of energy as they do, right? Because it's kind of off balance. That's not that's one thing. So I think the whole Tabari thing, um, I think that was the issue. She was not into him. He did not feel that, you know, he needed to pursue her because she never gave any indication that she was really into him. Now, as far as Cam, Cam was the best communicator of anybody on show, mm -hmm. men and women, hands down. Mm -hmm. He continued from day one. And well, I think he was, he was when in person, he probably was in person, but there was times where he was, at, was he a no show at one point or no? He, well, he no, he was late. He, can, yeah, he showed he up for everything, and 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 if you were and if you recall, the ladies they spoke highly of him. Yeah, they on did. this on this yeah. reunion, they spoke highly of him, and uh, they said he so, makes sure that they get home and things like that. And they, he, he was a good guy. He, he was uh, a good guy. What, what she, what she called it uh, over under promise and over deliver. That's what mm -hmm. she called it. Mm -hmm. that. So um, and and Don, I think Don was probably more into Ashley than Ashley was into him. And uh, I, I saw him doing a lot of pursuing of Ashley. So I'm not sure what, what she was talking about. Because well, there were some, there were some missed messages between the Android and the iPhone apparently. Yeah. And, and it was like, he said it was a miscommunication. It wasn't him not mm -hmm. communicating. It just, the messages just wasn't getting through. I mean, that's mm -hmm. of no fault to him. I don't know what kind of settings they got, but that was his explanation. Um, Kirsten, he gets on the stage. <laughs> Kirsten was <laughs> done. This brother said, I ain't got nothing to say. Now, listen. <laughs> he was when done. You, he was done. When you're, when you're young, your mother tell you, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. All right. I, think, I think he took his mama's advice. <laughs> he took Ooh. his mama's advice. He did. What, what do you think that that was about, though? Why Why did you think Kirsten said nothing? Because I'm going to tell you, um, Vernicia said it's because he, he doesn't like rejection. Okay. He hates rejection. So, so why do you think Kirsten said nothing? Vernicia Ver said a lot of stuff that didn't make any sense. I mean, she was just, you know, playing out every bad experience she ever had on this show with her commentary. Um, I really just think he was over it. And I'm not sure when he came on the set. Was he, was he the first one to come out? Because I'm not sure if he got a chance to see how other was, folks was, i think he was the first one he was the first one first, i yeah, just yeah. don't think i i don't think that he was into ashley uh and i just don't think he had like you said he didn't have anything to say he didn't want to be there and he probably didn't want to take a beating right, and he just right. he just shut it he shut it down he shut it completely down. He said, "He said I'm here because I signed a contract." Now, from a male perspective, Kirsten wasn't checking for Ashley. He just no, wasn't, he wasn't checking for Ashley. No. Um, he said, "I don't need to do this. I know who I am." When he went into the backstage, um, and I take that as a guy who feel like. He ain't lose nothing with Ashley. She not on his level as far as he was concerned. And he was just there to, um, you know, fulfill a contract. Now, he was probably one of the guys who thought this was going to be a regular ready to love series where he can date multiple women, not just be handed one woman. He really was into Zadia, if you remember. Because that first date, he had a date with Ashley and Zadia. And oh, yeah, yeah. he was actually more into Zadia 
than he was into acting. I think he was more into Zadia physically. I think yes. he was. Um, yeah. I think he was the most interested in Stormy. <laughs> yes, he was. He he now you know he did. He flirted. He flirted. Yeah, he, flirted. <laughs> he flirted back with her. He was he was more interested in Stormy. I I, I don't doubt for a second he would have he would have went after Stormy if she was on the show for real. Well, for sure. And he, you know, you could tell by the way he was moving with Ashley right there that he clearly yeah, uh, yeah. was not concerned with Ashley because he clearly flirted with with Stormy. Well, our friend, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. You ain't gonna be, you know, uh, flirting with your woman if you are so into her. You just, it's, you just not. So, well, even yeah. if you, even if you just, even if you like the person, like if you, if you like the person, there's just gonna be some level of, of regard for that person. But he just had no regard for, for Ashley. And I, I just, I thought that that was a tad bit, not even a tad bit. That was. That was disrespectful. He should not have conducted himself like that, you know, with Ashley. So, uh, but he he, what, but you, he on stage or? Well, you know, on that date with Stormy. But oh, but yeah, Ashley, on that on that date, yeah. But Ashley, sure. J Ashley couldn't read the room. She just couldn't. She couldn't read the room in terms of, you know, not getting that this guy wasn't into her. Which is weird that Bernicia said. He didn't like rejection. I didn't see him being rejected. Right, I just saw I, Ashley, you know, dismissing him simply because she knew that the guy wasn't, you know, giving her the attention that she wanted. And eventually she ended up going back to her second cho choice, which was Don. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I didn't I didn't see that as 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 uh, him having an issue with rejection. He was just over it. He was right. completely over it. Yeah, he was he was completely over it. He wanted to be done with it. And um, he was he was like, man, I, I ain't got nothing to say. Because I, I had a feeling that if he would have said something, it would have been negative. Oh, and it he, was gonna it was gonna be either nothing or really, really, really bad. Yeah, yeah. And he so, would not have cared either way how he appeared after now, saying what he said. Now, there's going to be some women who say he's just jealous of Don. He's mad that he got rejected by Ashley. I don't yeah. think he cares. I don't think he cares. Mm. I don't think he cared enough about Ashley to be concerned about who he who she picked i i didn't i didn't pick up that he was jealous i just picked up that the guy was just unbothered and un and unconcerned and uninterested yeah it, exactly he was, yeah he was all of that yeah 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 so i thought that that was kind of weird yeah because he said he know who he is and and you know, and I know as Pernicia said, men hate rejection and all this other stuff. But I'm like, uh, this dude can't be bothered. He ain't bothered about that. No, no. He I probably wouldn't... thought Ashley was weird, if I'm being honest. Like, he probably thought he was probably turned off because she's a lot. Ashley a... is one of those people who you got to take in small doses because she can be a lot. And I think he was probably really not even feeling her vibe he probably wish he could have had more women to date in a normal ready to love scenario i think but, so because do you remember when he made the comment about her nails he was kind of like yeah. in a judgy kind of way you know the nails i think she she was she was a she was a bit much for him yeah she was and then don they start interviewing don right Mm -hmm. Don said he was bothered by some things. He was. He said that Ashley said, I am the star of this show. <laughs> and you are here to please me. <laughs> I seen that. I was like, oh my goodness. No, she didn't say that. And you know, you know what was really weird when the uh the Tamika in the end when she said to Ashley about Ashley finding her voice I'm like wait a minute mm -hmm. Ashley never lost her voice 
Right. Actually, never had any problem. She actually, don't lose her voice with uh, men. She loses it with women. So she'll say she'll talk greasy to the men, but when her when it's her friend Stormy, she don't say nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's just how she moves. She, you know, the men, oh, who cares, whatever. I'm the star of this show, and you are here to please me. And this, I don't know if this show realized the monsters they created. I'm going to just be real. Because these women, ego has gotten, I've, I've watched their ego grow episode to episode to episode. Okay. For Ashley to say I'm the star of this show, huge ego. But do you? But do? But do you did see the women react to her, but nobody. But nobody said. Nobody said anything. nothing. They were just more ooh surprised. Now imagine if a guy said he is the star of this show. Imagine how their reaction will be. It will be swift. It will be sharp. It will be unforgiving. Okay. And but since she's part of the club, she's part of the sisterhood, they're just gonna act surprised and let it ride. Because now, everybody host, knows it was out of order. It was everybody completely out of, out of order because the yeah. host the host, her immediate response was no, she didn't. Like, did she just mm -hmm. say that? That mm -hmm. was her immediate response. And even Tamika tried to interject and say, Wait, hold up, Ashley. But then you can't tell Ashley anything. You really cannot tell her anything. Right. Especially you when know, critic you know, crit right. or critiques or anything like and that. She she just she just she just dug in even more. I mean, she truly is 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 I mean it's kind of delusional, but that's that's how she that's how she feels. It's clearly how she feels. Clearly how she feels. She was a star of the show. This is this is why this is why this format needs to be changed because the pursuers are the men for, for one for one. I can't really imagine a man saying that to a woman. I'm here, I'm the star of this show. You here to please me. I can't imagine a guy saying that. If, well, he, is, if he does say it, he is <laughs> he is well, dismissed from the show. He's exiled. He's told about himself by all the women. But wait a second. Think about this. Let's go back to something that Jabari said that I think the women completely missed when he talked about um, because because he they tried to make it out like he was saying that a woman was there to serve him, that when he was talking about when he's at home, he wants his woman to be home. And, uh, you know, when Vernicia would would come home, she'd have to take the, the boss hat off or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to say it like he was coming across saying like, you know, he was the boss. He was the. And when he said head of household, he wasn't necessarily saying, at least I don't think he was saying that, you know, he was the king of the show and, you know, he laid down the law. But they were quick to take him to task for what he said, which is oh, what I, I don't think he was saying it in a, in a negative way, the way they try to betray it. But they never held Ashley to account exactly. for what she that, said. That was, that's a good point. And that's that's part of the, the hypocrisy that you know makes me itch if i'm if i'm being honest hypocrisy is a big problem with me it's hard for me to deal with because uh to me it's like the cousin of a liar yeah because because you're telling me something that's tr good for you but for somebody else they can't they can't do what you do what what makes you so special like yeah. it, I, I just can't stand hypocrisy and yeah, they 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 was all up down his throat about his his statement, which I'm gonna get into. But you're right; they didn't hold Ashley to the same standards. But if I'm being honest, that's typical. I I really didn't even expect them to. It's just it's it's a it's a way that men have to understand how some women 
move not not wonderful women like yourself here okay? well thank so, you <laughs> <laughs> okay you you are you are exceptional but there are some women out there who are in this uh category that um that men have to understand how this group of women move and a lot of men just don't uh really do well or get along with that group of women because they they are steeped in hypocrisy and 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 having every advantage to themselves and it shouldn't be an us against them it really it shouldn't be it, it really shouldn't be and the way that the show played out you know in the end it was this it was this us against them and that's what i found to be so disheartening about the whole you know ride with with this ready you know make the move because we get so invested in the show mm -hmm. and we and I think that's why we just have this visceral response because we have such high hopes, right? And mm -hmm. we just want a level playing field and we just want everybody, you know, held accountable. Uh, and it's just so slanted that anybody that has some some objectivity, um, they, they they should take issue with the way this this reunion played out. Yeah, and again, I don't see that type of bias when you know Tommy Miles is is hosting a reunion or whatever he'll he he tries to calm everything down and make everybody feel respected and this that and the third but it's like you got you got the host and you got the matchmaker and they just riding with the women and none of the women are held accountable it's like it's pretty clear that this is a woman's show it's pretty clear but it's like you're not even setting a good example for how dating should be because if you're not ever holding the women accountable they're never going to the, the a lot of these women i don't think they're ever going to get their stuff together because they have so much uh support from their sisterhood that they're not going to ever look within themselves and say what's wrong with me no, and Tamika and Tamika nor the host had the bandwidth to to do that. Even right. you know, from the beginning to the end, Tamika, uh, she had so many opportunities. Um, you know, they, they should bring a real life coach on if if they really want to um, you know, help the women that come on the show and then help us, folks that are tuning in right. from week to week. You know, if they bring a real life coach on where we could actually see the progress, where we could see folks being held accountable. Uh, and, and the thing about it is, you know, you should want that. If 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 you're if you're moving reckless and you're moving mad, you should want someone to tell you, hey, that's not cool. And here's right. here's why it's not cool. And guess what? We should be able to sit and talk about it without the you know, the screaming and the hollering and the, the cussing each other out, there, there should be an opportunity for somebody to come and say, hey, when you did X, Y, Z, you know, this is this is why I took issue with that. And then it gives the other person an opportunity to say, oh, OK, well, that's not what I intended to do. And to also go a little further and to say why it triggered you. You know, that's where the growth comes, because we all have past experiences and we are all triggered you know but the, the the difference is in terms of how you manage that moment when you're triggered how do you respond to that and and most of us and here's the thing we know how to behave because guess what when you go on your job <laughs> Yeah. And you got your good job. You cold switch like a mug. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Cold switch like a mug. Exactly. Um, so why can't we do the same thing outside of the workforce? Because we're right. obviously we're capable of doing it. We're capable of doing it. You know why? Because it's a battle between men and women for yeah. some reason. It's a battle. It's it's it, they one or the other wants to be the head of the relationship but then we both lose we both lose because 
It shouldn't be, you know, you win out, you know, if there's a winner or loser, then we both lose. And even True. with this show, we, you know, and I, here's the thing. For Sharice and Maurice, man, I am rooting for them. I mm -hmm. really, really hope that they make it. I really, yeah. really do. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you think about Sharice and Maurice finding I, love? <laughs> I think Sharice is getting some act right. I really do think <laughs> Sharice is getting some act right. And I think Sharice is on, if she continues, because I think Maurice is a good guy. And I think Maurice... It's sort of like that calmness and that steadiness that Sharice needs. In addition to that, I mean, he can show Sharice, you know, the finer things in life. He can, mm -hmm. you know, provide those things for her. And guess what? That's fine. If he's, if he's, if he has the means to do that, and if he doesn't mind doing those things for her, they seem to enjoy all of the same things, then I say, great, have at it. And in the end, I, I do want Sharice to succeed. I really, really do want her. Actually, all of the women. I, I would want all of the women to succeed. But it seems like Sharice has kind of figured some things out. She's not quite there yet, but I think she's figured some things out. You know, um, yo, yo, I'm going to be honest. If I was putting money on how this show would have ended, I would have lost all my money. Really? I would have lost it all. There's no way I would have said Sharice would be the only one with a man. Really? Oh, in the beginning. Now, now in the beginning. You see what I'm, I'm saying? I'm, oh, yeah. Going into, listen, going into this particular show and seeing Sharice on the past show, the Ready to Love, mm -hmm. neither would I. I, I would have lost all my money. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and I, I'm serious. And I didn't know Bernicia going into it. I only had ready to love, you know, Zadia. So I wasn't really, I didn't have really high hopes for Zadia because of the way she was such a mean girl. Um, Ashley had everybody fooled. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Ashley had everybody fooled. <laughs> and uh, Sharice, I just didn't, even early on, Sharice didn't seem like, she barely smiled. It's like Sharice didn't even, but as the, as it's, you know, week after week, you could see Sharice kind of warming up and kind of loosening up. And she did that for Maurice. She really, really did. And she, and let me tell you something, this particular uh, reunion, I, me, I think Sharice has looked the best. I thought mm -hmm. Sharice was absolutely beautiful sitting there next to Maurice. She was smiling. She had a glow about her. And you could just tell she was happy. Now, I, I, I'm hoping it'll be, you know, long standing, but Sharice looked the best that I've ever seen her look. Yeah, yeah. Look, at the end of the day, I want happiness for all these women. Okay, mm -hmm. but Sharice has done something what I would consider... And, you know, don't you, you can tell me about myself if you think I'm wrong, but Sharice has hit the wall. And what happens when uh, I know that's a term, you know, that that's out there. But the reason I say that is Sharice has realized there's not many moons left. Okay, I agree with you. She is, she is the oldest one of all those ladies. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she has hit a reality wall that the rest of them have not hit yet. Mm -hmm. So she is. She says something interesting. She said, "I'm ready to. I. 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 I feel like I'm. Des I deserve to be loved, or I'm ready to be loved, or it's possible to love me." It shows me she has humbled herself when it comes to the relationships, and she is approaching it with a bit of more urgency than the other women are mm -hmm. okay the other women they got they still fresh in the you know sisterhood club and they think they got all the time in the world and then mr right is going to come sharice is not living under that reality no more she mm -hmm. knows that time is running out okay mm -hmm. and and if i'm gonna lock my man down i gotta <laughs> you know the sooner the better because i ain't getting no younger mm -hmm. all right so for that 
I respect Sharice's mentality because she's looking at it from a bit of a more perspective, uh, you know, view. And mm -hmm. again, she's the oldest one, so she may have that uh, that maturity level that the other ladies don't have. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really seen her pop off at Maurice much. I no. think she's keeping it in check. Do I think that it's real? Probably not. I think at some point it's gonna it's gonna blow up. I, I don't think that they're gonna last. To be honest, because I think that <laughs> just reality shows in general don't. Yeah got a but, good record but i'm i'm rooting for them i am I root, and i too. think i think you know these people fool us all the time they fool us all the time mm -hmm. because we see them and we think it's genuine and we think it's authentic and i'm a, i'm just going to go out on the line and say i'm buying into the whole Sharice and and and, and Maurice uh you know courtship because i see the way he looks at her you know is 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 very endearing the way he sort of you know he'll gently touch her or he'll like you know just the way he he looks at her and speaks of her but and i and i think sharice is holding it together as best she can like i said yes. she got to act right when it came to maurice because i don't think she wants to he checks a lot of the boxes he met she met that family she met the daughter and she was like okay this this is a this is a good guy so she got some, she got some act right real quick. Now, un, unless and until she can work out all of the issues that she has with women and the, the triggering and her, because Sharice can just pop off. And when she goes there, she goes there. She's like a pit bull, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that she wants Maurice to see too many events with her acting like that. And yeah. so... She needs Sharice, to please don't mess this up. Please I hope she does. Up, I really hope that she goes. Sharice needs a good group of good girlfriends. She yes. really, really does. But she don't that's mess with what, women. She, that's the problem. <laughs> she, and that's she the do problem. Not do women. She does not do women, but she needs a good group of good girlfriends that can support her, love her, you know. Um, you know what she needs? She needs anger management. She does, okay. and that that's the the good girlfriends and some therapy. She does. She she does. I, I, I she she just don't vibe with women. I think she was like like they said she was bullied. So I just don't think she'll ever trust in them. But if she go to some anger management, because her problem is her anger. She oh, just yeah. goes. She just goes. You know. You know. Uh, to zero to 100 so quick that she it's does. Like, you know and you'd be like is all of that necessary i mean exactly. even Manisha was like oh my god she's just yeah. going off like she just needs anger management yeah. and she can stay see the thing about maurice is he keep her in her cool he does you know what i mean there's going to be a point where she's going to get out of her cool uh, I don't doubt that because it's in her personality. Yeah, that's why she needs a guy like Maurice to even her out. But yeah. um, she just needs to manage that. And believe it or not, Maurice is helping her to manage that because just his presence exactly. is helping her manage that because exactly. she don't want to pop off and wow. kind of being a little maybe fake right now because she don't want to scare this guy off exactly but whatever it is she's doing is working and it's she working to recalibrate that into her personality yeah and i <laughs> and think not she, let it be fake let it be yeah. real. yeah and see and I, she she you know and maurice I, the, you know he's 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 one of those uh quiet but very strong and steady sort of individuals that's the way i see him he's he's that guy that's that quiet guy but Sharice respects him. That's that's the biggest thing that I see. Not only does she like him, but she respects him. Right, and, right. So that's going to go a long way in terms of, like you said, keeping her kind of like on an even keel. Because I guarantee, and I'm not going to guarantee, but I would hope that, or I like to believe that if Maurice says Sharice, calm down. 
that she's likely to listen to him yeah, and be like money, he got the status he got the exactly swag, you know the, exactly the, he got he checking off a lot of her boxes i guess exactly. she's attracted to him they tracked it to each other. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Maurice really wants a what he would consider a trophy wife at his Oh age. yeah. And that's yeah, she, what she checks the boxes. Is. She she, she yeah, checks she the boxes for him too. They look yeah, good they together. Do. They, they do. look good together. They do. They do. I hope I, I wish them nothing but the best, but exactly. Sharice, don't mess this up. And I hope she Maurice, does. Don't be a player. Don't no. don't mess it up either. Too. No, so, no. Because I, I, I yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I say that about I, both of them. Exactly. Uh, Vernicia tried to put Mizell on blast. Lord. You know I mean? well, let me ask saying, you this. Stop. Don't be down playing me. Even though I didn't want to go on a date, I didn't care if we went on a date again. Don't be down playing me. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you're down playing him. You didn't want, you didn't care if y'all went on another date. But you want him? You don't want him to downplay you. The ego of these women is absolutely ridiculous to me. Listen, <laughs> okay, why hasn't anybody held Vernicia accountable for the whole Mizell situation? Number one, and if you remember, she said that Mizell and Tabari were together when they exchanged phone numbers. Mm-hmm. That could have been a turning point right there for Tabari. Maybe he saw how she was moving with Mizell. Mm. Because mm. at that, here's the thing. Vernicia likes attention. <laughs> Point blank period. Mm-hmm. And she does a lot to get attention. Now, she does. She does. She does. Now, we've talked about, you know, her build, her body, and you're going to see her body irrespective, you know, with, with, with irrespective of what she wears, you're going to see her body. But Vernicia takes it to the extreme. And I'm just going to say it in terms of her dress and mm. why she's 42. Why are you still leading with that? Do you have anything else to offer? Vernicia is very, she's very shallow. She doesn't have her conversation. The depth is not there. But but you got the host of the show saying, oh, just look at her. She's a goddess. This, that, and the third. Oh, you're, look, she's so gorgeous. Everybody would agree. We could all see what you've seen in her, Mizell. Like, they gas her head up like. Well, but what else is there? What else is there? And he stepped to she, her. She probably figures that's all she needs. But why? That's, what, that's how a lot of women think. They figure that's the all they needs is looks and maybe to give you some every when they feel like it or whatever. And and that's that's all. That's that's it. But she should have shut Mizell down. If he stepped to her, she should have shut him down. Because guess she was what? Interested in him, though. She was very interested in him. Mm-hmm. And she made it known with Sharice. She couldn't wait to tell Sharice how he was calling her and how mm-hmm. he was texting her. But I'm sitting here saying, wait a second, Vernicia. You knew. Let's put my Zell to the side. You know the rules of the show. You knew that he came there for Sharice. So why would you go there with him knowing all along that he was Sharice's guy? So she was completely out of order, but Sharice never even, Sharice never took her to task on it. Nobody held Vernicia accountable. Now, Mizell, yeah, he was, he was moving mad. He was really moving mad, but he was only allowed to do so much because of Vernicia. Right. And and this whole I don't care if we go on a date and all this other stuff, you was practically throwing it in Sharice's face that he was she was calling, sending sending you texts and stuff like that. And you even said, Yeah, I wanna see where this goes. You know, we, we can she, all date e- each other. So yeah, I wanna see where this goes. So exactly. She, she couldn't wait to tell Sharice and I'm just like, Okay, well that's is that part of the sisterhood too? So right, right. I 
I, I, I didn't like the way, and that was to me that was hurtful to Sharice because she was really liking Mizell. And you remember at that mixer, where the, at, at, at the birthday party, they were kind of hugged up. I mean, he yeah. was kissing her forehead, and and you know, well, Char- kiss- yeah, yeah, he was kissing Sharice forehead. And Sharice yeah. is not even a touchy feely person, and they were right. touchy feely. So if I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, well, that could go somewhere. But Renisha, she couldn't wait to tell Sharice about him calling her and this, oh, that, God. the other. So that was that was wrong, and she 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 makes it known that you know. She has no problem getting men. All of the men want her. And I believe that. But then what are you attracting? And then, but you're still single. You, 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 you're attracting, even if you're attracting, you know, a good guy with some depth, are you able to keep him? Because there's not much depth there. Right. At the end of the day, I think Mizell is a bit of a weasel. Um, Very much so. Very much but, so. But I think Vernicia was just being... A uh, little disingenuous, and you know, say like protecting her ego, because oh, yeah. she was the one. It's funny that she said Kirsten don't like rejection. She's the one who don't like rejection. Okay? Because <laughs> when he said he said no, I'd, I'd rather date Sharice or whatever, you know, and you know, then she just got so salty at him. <laughs> Oh well, I done found somebody else. I'm I'm currently dating somebody else now. He was like, "Fine, I'm. I hope y'all, <laughs> I hope y'all happy. That's good." But he played her. He played right. her because he he, yeah. he, he knew had that. her ego and she he did take that. he did. And you, I'm thinking this guy, this this is not his first rodeo. This is not <laughs> this guy's first rodeo. No, it ain't. And you should have seen the way she was looking at him at that at that reunion. Like, I mean, her eyes was just cut at him the whole time. Mm-hmm. She just had that mean look at Mizell, mm-hmm. like you, you son of a b. Anyway, yeah, she, he he bruised that ego. She oh has my the- goodness, yeah, probably more than anybody else did to Vernisha on that Ooh. show. And, and don't try to downplay me. Oh, you, you just hurt. You, you just ego is just bruised. That's all that is, girl. Stop. Yeah. Playing. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> now let's get into it. Jabari said that he believed in gender roles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, what, what do you think about that? First of all, let's talk gender roles. I think he's a very traditional guy, and uh, I think. I think most women also <laughs> believe in gender roles. I think, you know, to the extent that, you know, if 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 you want to do the right thing, you know, but for folks that want their cake and they want to eat it too, then, you know, you pick and choose when you when you when you want the gender roles, when you want tradition, and then when you want to, you can't have it both ways. You just cannot have it both ways. Well, apparently the women on the panel had a whole problem with Jabari saying he believed in gender roles. And and then they said, you need to bend. You need to bend, 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 bend. If it's the right one, you need to bend. He was like, whoa, <laughs> okay. I ain't trying to bend like that. I'm a man at the end of the day. You don't want no man bending. I but- but they said, what? Like, you know what the host said? Oh, you about to trigger me. Mm-hmm. You about to trigger me. Oh, I'm getting triggered. That's yeah. what the host said. Yeah. Why, why is that? It's funny that traditional relationships have been a thing since time and memorial. Okay? It's, they've been a thing practically most of humanity. It's not only until now, in this slit of time, women have a problem. A lot of women, not all, but a lot of women have a problem with traditional gender role relationships. And especially in the West. And especially with some sisters. Yeah. Just keeping it real. All right. Um, I do find that a lot of times, uh, a lot of them do have problems with gender roles up until the check comes when the check comes then it's gender roles 
I watched this one video where this guy had seven people or whatever at this mm-hmm. dinner. Did you see that video? Mm-mm. Uh, it was it was one lady's birthday, and he had his wife with him, and he had like a couple other young ladies with him, and they and because he was the man at the table, all the women expected him to pay for everybody. Okay, now he was married. He had a wife. He had kids. He was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm the man at this table don't mean I'm supposed to pay for everybody. I got a I got a wife, okay? Yeah. I'm not trying to I'm trying not I'm not trying to impress anybody, okay? Now it was her birthday, so I'ma treat her. But I'ma treat her and I'ma treat my wife and my family. Okay. Just because I'm the man here, oh well, that ain't how it go. I'm not paying for nothing. You supposed to be, ain't you the man? Ain't you the man? But that's the that's the that's the same person that will say I don't need a man or Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the same person that say I don't need a man and men ain't ish and I'm a boss chick and I'm this, that and the third and I can you know, I can do a, you know, all this by myself. So So you um, can so, pick and choose. You cannot you cannot pick and choose. That's what they want to though. They want to. They want to pick and choose when traditional roles is is applied okay when i'm at the house uh i make all the decisions but when the check come then you play your man role that's when i believe in gender roles okay that's how a lot of women think it seemed like and it's just like (laughs) they had all kind of problems with uh jabari saying that and he was they were saying no you need to bend 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 and he like i'm a man i ain't bending for nobody yeah because... i would have said the same thing i came front i would have said the same i'm not bent bent you want me a man to bend bend over yeah, like and, and, Come on, and I, I took issue with that and i i think what he was saying because i i think tavari is a very level-headed guy mm-hmm. and i think tavari if if because you could see the way he interacted with Renisha. Um I I think he's a very and I I must say a simple guy, not not in a derogatory way, but in a, in a very positive way. This guy I think he believes in going to work, you know, coming home because he even said to himself that he had that past life when he was a player and he did all those things, you know. Uh he talked about his daughters and and this, that, and the other. And I think, you know, he's a hardworking guy. He's not the richest guy, but, you know, he goes to work. He comes home. I think he's a guy that takes care of his household. I think he's a guy that when there's a decision that has to be made, I don't see him as being sort of like a dictator or anything like that. Tabari, he, J- Jabari did not show up like that. But I think at the end of the day, he's saying if there's a decision that has to be made, and if somebody has to make a decision, I'm going to make a decision that's in the best interest of my family. I'm not going to make a decision that's going to hurt my family or go against my family. And I think that's in any situation, you know, when 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 you're in a leadership position or when you're in a position where folks have to depend on you. And at the end of the day, the when the buck stops with you, then you can't just bend to the will. That's just like as a parent, when you have children, you don't bend to the will of a child. You right. conduct yourself and you do things that's in the best interest of the child. Now, do you listen to your children? Yes, you listen to your children because I don't think any parent should just be dismissive you know, of their children. I don't think any spouse should be dismissive of the other spouse. But at the end of the day, we have to come to some common ground and both parties have to be mature enough to say, OK, how are we going to compromise on this issue and how are we going to come to some agreement? But, you know, men and women are different. And me, myself, I, I grew up in a very traditional uh, household. You know, my my parents, both parents are deceased now, but my parents were born in 1920. So if you could imagine, it was a very traditional household. But I guarantee you, if anything went wrong in my household, my dad was the first one to step up and say, "Okay, I got this. 
I'm ultimately it's my responsibility to figure out how to fix this, how to protect everybody, how to provide for everybody. Ultimately, he put all of that on his shoulders. So when you have somebody that's putting all of that on their shoulders, there's a certain amount of respect and reverence that comes along with that responsibility. And I'm talking about guys that are doing it the right way and that are making decisions that are in the best interest of the household. They're not moving reckless, you know, and they're not moving mad. They're 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 doing it the right way. There was a discussion on the internet that I seen and it was about uh, conflict on head of the household. And it, it, it seems that uh, there's a bit of confusion in the West. What defines the head of household in your opinion? Well, unfortunately, there are too many households that are not uh, led by men. Mm -hmm. And so you know, in the black community, uh, we have a lot of, you know, black women that are the head of household. Mm -hmm. And so when you, and, and maybe in some situations you grew up seeing that you've never, you've never, um, experienced a household where, you know, it was actually led by a man, mm -hmm. a father. Mm -hmm. And so if, if that's all, you know, and that's all you know in terms of the woman having to lead and the woman having to be strong and the woman having to, you know, do it all. At some point, it because it's like it's like turning the ship. How do mm -hmm. you how do you navigate those waters and how do you even recognize, you know, an alternative role when you've never seen it and you've never experienced it? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the, to me that's the the the, the, the true sort of shame and sadness of it all. <clears throat> yeah, I um this is just my personal opinion. You know, I don't really expect anybody to agree with it or what this is my own personal opinion. I think the head of household is if a if a man is in the house, he's the head of the household. If if there's no man in the house, then the woman is the head of the household. It's not defined by income, which a lot of women seem to be getting confused by. Uh, and my, my definition of head of household is whoever will put their life on the line for that family first. And that is normally the man. Now, I was watching uh, a movie called um, Malcolm X with Denzel Washington. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was in a room with they were going to rob some people. Right. This is this is young Malcolm. He was in a room with some people and a light skinned brother. Uh tested him on who was head of the the, the gang i guess you could say mm -hmm. and you know uh malcolm x denzel he uh you know they start playing russian roulette and he said look listen don't ever test somebody who is not willing to risk it all and lay their life on the line okay and i take that uh example as how it should be as far as who is head of the household whoever does that they have to say so as which direction we going and nine times out of ten that's a man if it and, and if a man is not willing to do that he don't deserve to be the head of your household but well, that's true I, I i i agree with that so, i, I yeah. agree with that i i so. definitely agree with that but these you know you know zadia said she wanted the she wanted the soft life and she wanted all of those things. Well, but mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot that comes with that. You, you, you can't want the soft life, but then you want to be running everything. That's, that's just not, doesn't work yeah. like that. Yeah. Doesn't work like T that. Tabari was pretty shocked by uh, Vernicia's decision, right? And he did, you, you mentioned it earlier, he did say that communication goes both ways. Uh, and she, he also said that she, Vern just wasn't inviting to him. She, he almost was pretty much like saying she ain't even feeling me. So why, why would I sit up here and 
uh, communicate this, that, and the third. And I'm not getting any signs of her really, truly being interested. You think she was more physically attracted to Jabari? I do. Which is uh, the whole thing with Renisha has just been so perplexing because I still don't know what she wants. I still don't They said know. that if you combine both men, you will have the perfect man. Do you think that's true? No, because I still don't even understand. Was there anything that she liked about Tabari? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. I, I, I don't. To me, Jabari was a good fit for her. And he was a fit for her based on what Renisha said when she first came on the show about being a homemaker and all these things. And then now we find out that she's out. Nine ten o'clock at night on this reunion, she says she's up to two three in the morning. I don't really know what your Bernisha does. I really don't know what she does, and I don't know what she wants because I really thought that her and Jabari, I thought they had nice chemistry. I really did. I think they. I thought they connected. You know, with respect to their daughters, and uh, I thought they did too. Um, but then she switched up. She switched. I, I just, I don't know what Vernicia wants. I, I really don't. I'm, I, I, I told, I told you this in the last one. I, I don't think Liz is too far from this. I really don't. I don't think Liz is too far from this decision either. Stirring up, uh, you know, because they, there's a saying out there, and that is that single women keep women single. Well, in Vernicia, because, because of she, their, the, the advice they give. Well, and it almost appears that Vernicia, she likes the chase. She, she, she likes the chase. And if a guy is not chasing, 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 you know, there's, there's just feeding her ego. Uh, it's just, it's, mm. it's just crazy to me uh, that we still don't understand you know what she wants and, and 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 what she's looking for. I don't even think she knows what she wants. She 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 just she's just you know feeling her way around this whole dating thing. Um, it's hard for me to really like look. Like I said before, if you have a problem with communication, then do your part. If communication really is a problem. And she kept, she did say that. She, she said that, you know, Tabari wasn't communicating. Well, you probably wasn't giving them no incentive to communicate. You probably wasn't physically uh, showing interest. And you probably wasn't, uh, you know, showing interest in other forms of communication. But you it doesn't extend to do. You wasn't interested in the dude. Keep it real. Keep it authentic. You kept him around because you were encouraged to get rid of all these guys, which is what I think by Liz or whoever else she's talking to. You were trying to keep your options open and you were, you know, just just getting rid of all these guys. So it's hard for me to really said oh well yeah tabari was right for not or, or he was wrong for not communicating if 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 she was communicating and he wasn't i'd be i'd be team Vern. but but, but she but wasn't see, he said he said there was not a day that i that went by that i didn't we didn't talk in some kind of way that's what he said that's exactly what he said and i i'm still confused because one plus one is not equaling. It's, it, it doesn't equal two with Renisha because if you had all of these issues with him, why did you keep him around? Why didn't you? And I think it, you know, why are we just... You don't want to be without a man on the show. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because she made it very, very clear. She couldn't wait to let us know that uh, Mizell was calling her and 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 texting her. She she said that right away. 
we on that was on one time during the show that she mentioned anything about in particular about uh Tabari not calling her. He she said something about he he hit her up at like six o'clock. Well, now I'm thinking if he's working all day and he's busy, it would kind of make sense, especially if I'm just getting to know you that six in the evening after I get off from work, maybe I hit you up and say, Hey, what's going on? Mm -hmm. But why did she, why did week after week, if he was only showing up for, uh, you know, events that production put, put forth, why, why did she keep him around? And to your point, she didn't want to be in a Sharice. She didn't want to be in the Sharice position of not having anybody on deck. So it goes back uh, to that ego. It goes back to that ego. ego. <laughs> exactly. It goes back to that ego because that at this ego is something fierce, man. Right. Something fierce. And I it's 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 just funny because I never would have thought that Vern and Ashley would have the biggest egos. I just I just wouldn't have thought that. They had the big uh, they, had, I they seen, had the biggest I ego. Seen, I seen they they're, you know episodes on ready to love i seen i seen so i i know you know how else much can you know about some people on these shows but at the same time i did see them in action i did not take them as being egotistical women but it seemed to get worse and worse as the season went on it's just ridiculous they came in more humble but by the end of it it was just huge ego. i i don't know if with stuff like this, it starts to, I start to think, you know, is production kind of putting them up to some of this stuff? Is production making them, talking to these ladies, telling them to, to get more flamboyant with, with some of their ways to boost ratings or whatever the case may be? These weren't the same women that walked in the door that, that seemed to have left, okay? I'm the star of this show and you, you're here to please me and you don't you don't sit up here and down shame me and i don't care if we went on another day you just don't down shame, like i don't know man i think it's it's understandable how a lot of these women are single still i even have i it's funny because i have more more um confidence in zadia now i do too uh, because I do i'll too. tell you this I think Zadia was at least trying. Now, she, you said she wanted the soft life and she wanted this, that, and the third. No doubt she wanted a doctor. She wanted to brag about her man and stuff like that. But I didn't see lack of effort from Zadia on trying to make this work. You know what I mean? I, I do have, uh, I have hope for Zadia because I did see a change in her from the previous Ready to Love uh season to now because she did soften up a bit and she she opened up she really liked cam and you could tell when they were sick yeah. but see zadia but is it for the, zadia, right but the problem is, it... is zadia hears what she wants to hear that right, is the right. problem with and, her and, and, and that's what i was going to get into with camille camille said that zadia just wasn't listening to what cam was saying what she wasn't and she, she she didn't listen and she wasn't willing to fall back a little bit and be open to compromise and i i really do think and and most people think that cam did not does not like Zadia and I will stand on this that he does like Zadia he <laughs> does he and he said it himself he was trying to figure out how she would fit in mm -hmm. his life like mm -hmm. now he was having a really really hard time because I think like we said before I think he's very very analytical to the point where he's almost programmed to a fault he sets up he puts a plan in, in place and he he works that plan to a fault and and like I said almost to his detriment to some extent because he was very unwavering but it goes back to that point where you were saying 
if this man is on his grind and he has a vision and he has he's on this mission, why should he deviate from that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I really don't think that he he should have been made to deviate from his plan. But Zion uh -oh. wasn't willing to even even compromise to a point. And he said, I need a year. He said, I need a year. Yeah. <laughs> a year is yeah. not a long time. Let, let, let me address, let me address Cam. Uh, first of all, I don't think that he fell in Zadia. I, I, I just don't. Um, I think a guy will uh, make time for the right one. I think he thinks Zadia is cool. I don't think that he feels like she is worth the disruption to his life. Well, and let me just say this. But let me, but let me say him. this. She did that to herself. She did it that was. to herself. She can every time they got together, in it was it was kind of chaotic. It was never easy breezy. It was never kind of laid back. It, think about it. every time we saw them on a date. Zadia was either saying something crazy about him moving or why can't he, she, it was, and I could see, I could see early on where he liked her. He really wow. liked her, but she made it so hard to just coexist with her because every time they went on a date, just sit back and have a good time. She was bringing up all of these issues. Every time they got together was issue, 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 issue. To the point where I think it, it did get to the point where he was like, this is too hard. Yeah. Camille said that she, she's going to look out for her and make sure that actions line up with words uh, more with Zadia. And Zadia looked shocked that she said <laughs> This chick is not getting it. She's not getting it. I, I don't know what you can do with that. Like, listen to your friend. Like, of all of the friends to listen to, that's the one you choose not to listen to? You listen to everybody else. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Like, I'm going to just say it. A lot of these women have what I would consider low dating IQs. They're not taking correct cues from these men. Ashley didn't take it from Kirsten. Vern didn't take it from Mizell. Uh, you know, uh, Zadi is not taking it from, uh, yeah, Cam. Zadi should have done the exact same thing that Sharice did <laughs> when she let Maurice go. And then Maurice came back at some point zadia should have let cam go if she would have let cam go he wouldn't have came back chances <laughs> are he, he would not he, he would not have but she I, I i still think she messed it she messed it up with him i think zadia has she has she just played it cool i think i don't, that, think, she, I don't think she I, messed it up with him i just think that she's not his type she is not worth the change. A man will make a change for the right one. Me, I'm a busy man. I got a lot of stuff going on. I will make time for the But right he did one. make time. Think about it. He did make he time. Did. See, that's what I'm saying. He but it did. wasn't it wasn't worth the time though. There's a difference. He, he it wasn't he, worth the time. He because don't... she didn't make it worth the time. Had they got together and they just had easy breezy dates. I think he would have enjoyed the process more. Zaya stressed him the whole time. And I'm and he thinking probably, you... he probably found out the real Zadia too and probably researched her and was like, oh no, I'm not hitting Because she wants what chick. she wants. Zadia wants what she wants. <laughs> she, you know, she 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 wants she wants a come up. And probably I think Cam probably knew that underneath everything. And was like, no, nah, she wants to yeah. come up. He, this, he, this chick he, is not. She's not. She's not. She don't have the same ambition as me. She's not. She's not doing as well. And she's, you know, she got an attitude. I've been researching her. I think he found out who Zadia was and was like, 
mm, you know, now that I smashed. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I don't, you know, Zadia never, never think about this. And all of the things that he talked about that he was playing, she, she never provided any support. We never saw her supporting anything that he was planning to do. It was all about her. So I agree with you that eventually he realized that she was not the person for him because Zania came across as very selfish, very, mm -hmm. very selfish and just wanting what she wanted. Now, one time, did we ever see her like big upping anything that he, that Cam was about? Yeah. Now, here's the, here's the funny part is that I thought Camille gave Zadia excellent advice. Mm -hmm. I also thought that Zadia gave some of the best advice on the show. But she gave it to um, Ashley. Mm -hmm. When she said that, you know, uh, what'd she say? Uh, to address the issues at the time and not let them linger on and things. I thought that was great advice that she it gave. It was. Actually. It was. It's funny it was. to me that she can give that advice, but when it comes to taking, I don't know what it, I, I don't know if she got a beef with Camille. I don't know if she don't respect Camille's opinion. I don't know what it is, but Camille been dropping jewels. She did. Zadia she was a real friend. Yeah, she was. But Zadi is not a real friend. She don't, she don't listen to nothing that she says for whatever reason. I think maybe uh Zadi is some kind of in some kind of competition with Camille. So she wants to she wants to do things her way. But she, I was surprised that she gave good advice to Ashley though. Mm -hmm. Zadia, Zadia, she 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 wants to hear what she wants to hear as long as you're saying something that benefits her and goes along with what she wants, then she's okay with it. Right. She's okay wow. with it. She just yes. could never get off of I want this, I want this, I want this. She never thought about what it was that Cam wanted. And I think at some point he realized that that this would not be, you know, the type of person that he could make a life with. Zadia doesn't compromise. She doesn't compromise. She doesn't. She doesn't. She 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 doesn't even listen to herself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, at least listen to yourself. You know, Cam is is telling you you like fifty going north. What what's going on with him? You're not even. I mean. She even said it. I don't know what to do. I don't know if this is going to work. Look, listen to what the dude is telling you. Take your own advice. Let this guy go. You know darn well that it's not, he's not ready. Sometimes I think that, well, I'll put it this way. I think that she thought that Cam was a bit of a unicorn for her. Okay. She's probably meeting guys who are thugs. You know what I mean? Or just don't have as much going for themselves as Cam. And Cam is a bit of a un unicorn. Yeah. So it was super hard for her. Oh, he's a doctor. He's studying this. He got crypto. He, he's he's in finance. He's, you know, he's tall. He's handsome. This, that, and the third. So it was hard for her to let that go. It was hard for her to let that go. But she needed to listen to her own advice. The guy just don't want you. And this is a microcosm of what goes on in the dating world. It's yeah, happens it a lot. It uh, a lot of guys end up with some women that they're not feeling, and they be like, look, they, they give them all kind of signals, and it goes reverse too. Women do the same thing with some guys, and, and sometimes when people, they try to keep you hooked in or whatever by doing whatever they got to do, and all the while you should be saying to yourself you know i should let this person go mm -hmm. they're they're not into it as as they're not putting in the effort uh and, and it's never going to be equal right it's never going to mm -hmm. be equal effort but at least 
you got to see both parties putting in effort. Yeah, yeah. She, she, uh, she, she had more than one opportunity to to let Cam go because he told her on more than one occasion that. Yeah, Cam said, "I don't have time for this." He was like, "Let's wrap this up." I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, look at that. Why, let's wrap this up. She was like, what? Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, no. Nah. Hey, you ain't doing me no favors. Just go ahead and go. I was like, I got some letter go. I got things to do. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. let's wrap this up. Okay, it's a wrap. Right, let's but go. he, you know, he was, I think. Gave her I a hug and a bounce. Yeah. But he gave her those pictures. That was such a nice, uh, sentimental gift. And I, in that moment, I felt so bad for Zadia because you could tell she was hurt. Yeah. She she was hurt. And she was really, like you said, Cam checked all of the boxes for her. Mm-hmm. And um, she she just, she, she, he couldn't see it. He couldn't see it. And like I said, I think because he's very analytical, I think Cam has to, uh, you know, he couldn't see it. He just could not see how she would fit in. My, my my prediction is that Cam is a sapiosexual. Mm. Zadia is not interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so if she's not interesting and she don't have the, the, the capacity to keep this guy's attention, yeah, he's going to write her off. Yeah. This yeah. is a thinking guy. This is He's a thing. Th- yeah. Yeah, yeah, he you is. Know, because you God. know what? A lot of what he was saying, Zaya couldn't even comprehend. Just some yeah. of the simple stuff that he was saying, she she just, she couldn't, she could not comprehend. Even when he was sitting there on that sofa, she misinterpreted a lot of what he said. So I I, I agree with you. He's a, he's a very smart guy. Clearly, yeah. he's a smart guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, he yeah. He is. So... I just don't think that she was on his level. He he probably helped her rotate her tires, and he was like, "Okay, that was that's all yeah. I'm gonna need from you at yeah. this moment. Uh, I got things to do. <laughs> Can we wrap this up? Yeah. Uh, nice to see you. I took pictures of you. You know, framed them. I'm trying to be yeah. a nice guy. I think that's what I got from Cam. I'm trying yeah. to be a nice guy. Yeah. And try to tell you in so many words that you ain't it, but yeah. you ain't listening for whatever. So do you think he should have sort of uh how do they how do they do it on Ready to Love where they excuse themselves, eliminate do you think he should have eliminated himself? Self eliminated himself. Yeah. That's a good I, question, I, but here's the problem. Uh you gotta account for how much money they getting. Now I heard that they're not getting much money. But if Cam is working on his investments like he said he is, his motivation could have been the check. Yeah, that's true. Because okay. he's all about the money. He's all he's, about. He's all about the money and getting his money right. Uh, so with that, I'm thinking that <clears throat> I don't know how much it is that they get, but every bit counts. Yeah, so, that's true. So, yeah, I stick around as long as y'all paying me. Yeah. But I, I think if he was, wasn't getting paid, he would have self-eliminated. Yeah. He would have been gone. Yeah. He, he almost tried to self-eliminate a couple times anyway. I mean, by just even he, by telling her. He did. Oh, you can, you can if, if I'm not the one for you, you can go find somebody else. Or if, you know, if you need more time, he, that was his attempt to self-eliminate, but it, you know, at the end of the day, um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how much they get per episode, but he was like, you know, is she going to let me stay here and, you know, <laughs> cash in on some of these checks? I'm going to yeah. stick around. Yeah. But all the while letting her know what it is. Yeah. He, did. yeah. he did. He did. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Sharice. Uh, first of all, they uh, Ashley and and Stormy, you know, they kind of got emotional and stuff like that. And Cherie said, "See, this is why I don't deal with chicks." <laughs> and we know this, Cherie. We know this. Uh, you this don't. Know I don't deal. They just too, she said I would end up in jail. Cherie okay. <laughs> said, "No, yeah, no, yeah, no, I end up in no, jail. This is no. just too much drama. It's too <laughs> much drama." I was I was rolling on. Yeah, she she spoke the truth though. That's for sure. She, 
<laughs> yeah, but it's funny because a lot of sisters give Sharice a lot of, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, sympathy, but Sharice don't be messing with them. I ain't, no, know. no, no. She, she, she really doesn't. But we, and I think it's because we just we saw the we saw some change in Sharice. We really did. I, mm. I did. I, I saw some change in her because she. Uh, yeah, but she she would let those women have it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. But but, but, but here's the thing though, if you on this particular uh, this particular show, Sharice didn't instigate anything though. She really yeah. didn't. No, she reacted. Was, she was a uh, She reacted. She was a, she was a shit starter. I'm a Wait, you, you think so? Oh yeah, definitely. Really? I seen I seen Zadia on a couple occasions try to squash. She poked the her a lot. They were, they were sitting on the couch, uh, you know. And Zadia, I think, uh, with all sincerity, said, "Look, I don't want us to have this beef in the house, and I think we should, you know, you know, just squash it and try to get along." And I and, remember that. And, and, I remember that. And Sharice was like, you know, I don't, I ain't thinking about that. You should move on and all it. I mean, she just, kept, yeah. she, she kind of tried to keep things, you know. Now there was a lot of stuff that we didn't see. Yeah. Okay? Um, Zadia was saying that she was kind of being bullied by Sharice. She brought her up in one of the uh, meetings with uh, Tamika, right? Mm -hmm. She was like, you know, uh, yeah, I'm in this household and. I'm getting pretty much bullied by Sharice and she calling me all kind of names and this, that, and the third. Yeah. Sharice Char was, she was a shit starter. Um, <laughs> she was, she, she, I, 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 think... I sincerely seen Zadia try to drop it and she, yeah. but sometimes the bully to become the bullier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, 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 you know what I mean? They become the bully. Yeah. So, I think, that, that, I, I do I do remember that and uh, it, there were times when Zadia did come across as if she was trying to squash the beef with her and then at other times it looked like she was really just poking Sharice you know and it doesn't take much for Sharice to just and we talked about that you know that I would imagine being friends with Sharice you just don't ever know what's gonna set her off and that's that's a yep. hard space to occupy with, 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 with her because at any moment it's like walking on eggshells around her. You don't, you don't know what's gonna set her off. She, uh, she, the only person she didn't beef with was Vernicia for the most yeah. part. Um, I thought it was coming when Vernicia said, "You know, your man is calling me, Mizell, this, that, and that." I thought that I was gonna get into it a little bit. I'm surprised it didn't. Yeah, I was surprised it didn't too. But uh, she was like, "Oh well, okay, yeah, let him let him go ahead and call you." But um, with Ashley at the reunion, she caught she caught smoke with her, and mm -hmm. and with uh, Zadia practically the whole season. She the was whole just season. Beating. Yeah, and you could see Zadia just disclude, you know, Sharice as. For the most part, even being friends with her. Yeah. Um, and again, there's a lot of stuff we did not see. And she can be a bit, you know, sarcastic and demeaning and and you know, facetious, all that stuff. She could she yeah. could be that uh, yeah. with with some of the ladies. And and she might not even think that it's something, but it, you know, they take it a certain type of way. You know. Men have more patience with um, women communicating sometimes, or and what I mean by that is they're they're the negative side of their communicating. Men have a little bit more patience with it. Um, women are women will take it more personal. So someone like Zadia, she might be able to say something to Sharice. I mean Maurice that she can't say to Zadi. Okay, Zadi is going to take it differently than Maurice is going to take mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times men have to say, oh, you know, 
that's that's just Sharice being Sharice mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, and they'll kind mm-hmm. of dismiss it and mm-hmm. be able to manage her emotions a little bit more. But other women are be like, girl, what are you talking about this, that, yeah. and third? And I don't take it the same. So yeah. um, I think that's a little bit of that is happening. And this is probably why she gets along with men more because yeah. they just have a higher tolerance for BS that's coming from beautiful women. Yeah. If I'm being honest. Yeah, a she lot gets of, a- can, yeah men can kind of be simps when, when it comes to uh beautiful women or just take a just have a higher tolerance you know the the that the more handsome guy or the more beautiful woman is going to get away with more from the opposite sex than yeah yeah other, you know what i'm saying what do you think about that i i, I agree uh and i also agree that uh i could see sharice not necessarily being as close to the other women. I think that the three, Ashley, Zadia, and Vernicia, I think that was probably a closeness with them that they did, the three of them had that they did not necessarily have with Sharice. And mo- some of that or most of that was probably due to Sharice because she herself said that she just doesn't interact well with with other women. And so you could see that kind of play out where I could see Sharice would just kind of like exclude herself or isolate herself uh, from the other women because there was a moment where they all kind of went after Sharice. And, you know, I don't ever remember necessarily anybody. Yeah, she... Ashley kind of came at her a little bit, of course, Zadia and even Vernicia, because um, Cherie said something about them excluding her or and they really took offense to that, because I think that I, I don't think like Vernicia and Ashley and, and Zadia and Sh- at their core, uh, they're not malicious and just downright evil. I think they all have their own little issues or whatever but i think that they i think they they probably tried with sharice more than they would have tried with anybody else which is probably why they got so upset when she said what she said about them excluding her um because they seemed to get really really upset even vernicia kind of like really kind of barked back at her to say no and I, I don't I don't think that that was them sort of overreacting to her. I think I think Sharice is a lot. I think it takes mm-hmm. a lot to occupy a space with her and to kind of keep the peace. I think to be in her presence as a female, I think you have to go uh, the extra mile and probably extend her a more grace than you would normally have to to keep the peace. Just to keep the peace, you know. Yeah, and I, I think that it's, it's going to be a weird uh, comparison, but bear with me. I think that Sharice is hard on the outside and soft in the inside. And I think that mm-hmm. Vernicia and Ashley are like fruit. They like, or, you know, like a pear with a pit in it. They like soft on the outside, but hard in the yeah. inside. It, it's, it's, you know, I, at the end of the day, I wish all the ladies... Uh, success in relationships i think egos really need to be put in check yeah um and that that goes for anybody who's trying to get in a a relationship i don't care if it's a man or a woman check your ego at the door yeah okay yeah um everybody humble themselves you're supposed to be working together as a team you know so what are your overall thoughts about the season, the women, the whatever, whatever you got? What are your overall thoughts of everything? I think if they're going to do this again, I, I think they probably need to revamp it a tad bit more. Uh, these women are clearly not comfortable pursuing because I think it, it goes against the grain. Uh, I think the show... I think they they have something that they can start with. I think if they tweak it a little bit, uh, maybe have a smaller pool of people, but kind of like have it to where folks can kind of choose 
both ways. Like the guys and the, you know, the girls can, can choose. Um, and I think that they need to bring a real life coach. They need to bring a real professional on board. And, and, and for us to see it, you know, we see a lot of the behavior see, that, that see the correction that they make. Yeah. To see the correction, because we see the behavior play out, but we need to see the correction in real time. And that's, I think that's what's missing. I think that's what that's what's missing. Yeah. Um, I think that overall, I think that the, <laughs> the format should be changed to the men. Um, like I said, I know that's not going to probably get ratings because women love it when they have all of the cards. Um, but I think that it would it would be better a better show because I don't think men a lot of men will I can't say all but a lot of men wouldn't lead with their ego. I didn't really see any men on this show with an ego. Probably the closest was uh, maybe Kirsten, uh, you know, but I just think that they should be choosing the women like it is. And I think it should imitate uh, real life as much as possible. I don't think the show yeah. imitates real life no. um, at all, really. And that part is where I don't think that's why I don't think that it's going to really help the women, even though they like to see themselves in that position. And a lot of women who view it like to see themselves in that position. I don't think that it's going to help them learn anything because what they're going to do is they're going to be in an echo chamber. They're going to uh, not hold each other accountable like the, you know, the, the matchmaker and the host did. Uh, their girlfriends are going to tell them whatever they want. Uh, look at her. She's a goddess. I understand why you like her. And, oh, you can't, you know, you you can't uh, expect, you know, us to act traditional. But, you you know, all, all this other stuff mm -hmm. like they deal with uh, Jabari. I just feel like it should be revamped a little bit. I didn't think Tamika did that bad of a deal, a, a job, if I'm being honest. But... Um, they clearly need more guidance. They need more honest guidance. And this they is do. why I think that, uh, like Tommy, that's why I think Tommy is a better host because he does hold everybody accountable for the most part to the same caliber. He don't let guys get away with nothing. He don't let women get away with nothing. So um, it just needs to be more, balance it needs another male host at some 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 level whether that be the the, the coach or the the reunion host whoever yeah. and i'm not talking about carlos king so cut it out no. um no. <laughs> no no disrespect to carlos no. king but but i'm just you know let let him do the mm -hmm. whole bell collective thing and just not not you know we need we need a someone with a a, a, a different perspective of male opinion so yeah um i guess it was worth covering this year the first year i don't know if i'll get to it next year or, or yeah. next season rather uh they probably have another season um is is put a ring on it is that still out i hope so that was you know, that was actually pretty it, has, i don't know if it started though yeah I, nah, that's a real I like that. Yeah, show. that's a real that's a real um, psychiatrist or a psychologist rather uh, mm -hmm. who are who is helping them out, and you get to see uh, the correction, so to speak. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's that format, and I, I do like that. So if that comes back out, I I cover put a ring on it too because uh, they have some real help. They're helping them. Um, exactly. And we're gonna get into ready to love we're gonna get to, to, to the new season okay. i know so yeah we're gonna check that out so any any other things you gotta say any anything else? no i uh i i enjoyed the season uh and so i'm ready for uh ready to love dallas i'm ready for uh that next show to come along 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready for Ready to Love too, and uh, we'll uh, be covering some of that. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, share, and subscribe for real to help us out. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye.